I was just lucky. I was able to survive the shit that I went through. I should ended up in jail. I should have probably killed a few people. I should not be where I am today. I can't tell you why I have a good heart. I can't tell you why I have a big heart. I can't tell you why. Because in all reality, the, the blueprint says that I shouldn't. I started thinking about my past when I was young. I started thinking about, you know, my, my mom, her abuse, leaving me, my stepmom's abuse, my father's fucking neglect. Just fighting tooth and nail, tooth and nail, trekking forward. I was just like, you know, having hope, losing hope, having hope, losing hope, having hope, losing hope. Keeping the faith. Then, you know, my mom, you know, adopting me. It was one of those things where I just, I couldn't go down. And I wasn't gonna lose. My childhood, I didn't have one. I didn't have one. All the Cinderella stories, the Disney fantasies, the Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny. It was over by the time I was five years old. Everything was peachy until that moment. My mom came home one night. She's crying, she's sad. We didn't know why. We didn't, we didn't understand why. Her and my dad, they were fighting, they were arguing quite a bit. Man, she lost it. She went crazy. And then, you know, shit, shit just fucking hit the fan. So we moved to a one bedroom apartment. She had like three jobs. She was never around. Mom ended up fucking me up really bad one time. Like bad, like really, really bad. And sent me to school. School saw me and they were like, yanked me out, child protective service. Where I'm from foster home to foster home for a while. In the corner court. And my dad and I'm getting custody. Ended up going to my dad's. It, it, nothing really changed there either. His, his girlfriend at the time, she's the worst. But, my mom and they were kidnapping me from my father, and then we ended up going to El Salvador. There was a war going on, and she takes us in the middle of this shit and like leaves us with my grandparents. Next morning, people wake up. She's gone. Like she's like just vanished out the door. Left us there. One day, she just shows up midday. It was, it was crazy. Picks us up. Next thing you know, we we're back in Dallas. She leaves me at my dad's front doorstep and boom, she was gone. And that's the last I saw of her. That was it. At one point, you, you're, you're, you're going through that, you're getting hit all the time. Like, you just think that's just how it is. You think that that's just the way life is. It never stopped and I never understood it. I kind of just took it. It was like, kind of became numb. How I survived it. Man, I don't, I don't know. But I just turned 12. And my dad wasn't around. His girlfriend kicked me out of the house. I was gone, that was it, I was on the streets. I ended up going to a buddy of mine's house. I just started crashing in his place. I got involved with his cousin's gangs. I was living under their roof. These guys were taking care of me. I had clothes, I had food, I had a roof over my head. But I kept going to school. That was my playground. That's where I was a kid. I was able to laugh, I was able to sort of joke.
I got into wrestling, and that's where things started changing a bit. I don't know what else to do. I, don't, I got nowhere else to go. I don't, I don't know anything. I, I want to go to college, but academics, I'm not there, and it's my only chance. So, whatever you want me to do, take it. Man. Here, I mean, make me a state champion. At that point, I got looked at from Oxford College and other schools too, and ended up going to Oxford. And then, then Joe came in. It was interesting and weird. But when she asked me, I, I was like, why? I mean, why would you want to adopt me? Like, why bring me into her family? She has seven children. She just loved me for who I was. To see that someone cared for you, it, you know, unconditional love. Believe me, I wasn't like the perfect child. I, you know, I got in some trouble. I was in jail. She had to bail me out of jail. And she never once threw me back, back in the streets kind of thing. I mean, I was already, she gave me a family. I started learning what I, what I lost, what I didn't know for 19 years. Like, I didn't know what family meant. I just didn't understand it. I think I fight because that's what I've been doing for the, my whole life. I think that that is just natural to me. I think that I've just been fighting tooth and nail to stay up float. It's one of the most natural things for me. It doesn't, like I don't fear, I don't fear anything to be honest. I don't fear death, I don't fear people. One of my teammates was doing amateur MMA. You know, I went to go watch him um, fight. I, that, that was it for me, and got into it from there. I don't remember like the, the feelings that I had or anything like that. I mean, I, I had been in fights when I was growing up, so it, it wasn't like my first rodeo as far as that. Um, I was in you know worse situations before where it's like me against ten, that sort of thing. Fighting professionally, it's a lifestyle. It's it's you don't have the Thanksgiving, you don't have the Christmases, you don't have the holidays like other people do. You know, it's it's a professional sport. Can I compete with the, the best guys out there? Yeah, I know I can. It's gonna take a, an army to take me down attitude. I just, you know, my whole life I never trusted anyone. I never, I mean, how can you, you know? 19 years later and finally you understand what like unconditional love is. I didn't know what that meant before. I, I just didn't know what it felt to somebody to comfort you, to hug you. How would I say so positive, man, because At the end of the day, I'm still living and I'm, and I'm healthy. You know, I was, I was just lucky. I, I lucked out, I was blessed. I think that my past has made me appreciate life, made me appreciate where I am or what I'm about. You know, well, there's a lot of emotion too in there.